And uh, Brother Dave wants me certainly to give thanks to those persons who have assisted administration and making sure we got a number when we came through the gates. It's the least in a team who uh, confirmed that most of us are really, really sick um, at the end of it. And uh, to the fine persons who actually prepared the meals and all those persons who had a part to play in the festivities yesterday, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. Um, I want to apologize if you smell a, an aroma of dengue or some type of a rub, rub. There's a lot of persons here who are hurting right now, and I want you to be in prayer. There's a lot of persons who are hurting. As a matter of fact, I want to recommend that we do this thing on Friday. I need at least two days. I don't know about you, but um, it was a beautiful time. We had a good time walking yesterday. Um, I came second. And uh, it's because the tennis I had, they kept, the laces kept untying for some reason. And uh, so I'll have a different pair of tennis for, for next time. Uh, but not to be undone, I made sure I brought my wife who came first. So I mean, you know, you do these things right, you know. And you understand I came second because I wanted her to, become, to come first, eh? You know, life is better when she comes first and I come second at home. You know? Really good, Dougie. Really good. But thank you so much, everyone who came out. Uh, we got Naldo who has an announcement as well. Please come. Woo! Hello, everyone. Um, I have some announcements for Breakaway. Oh, um, I have some announcements for Breakaway. Um, first and foremost, we had the persecuted church lock in this weekend, and all of the youth seem to have an amazing time. We had a simulation of what it would be like to be in a persecuted church. Um, not to the full extent, but enough to give them a, a good appreciation of what it's like and um, why there's so much prayer needed for those portions of the world. So, um, yeah, that went well. Thank you, parents, for bringing them out. The next, the next um, item that I have is next week we're going to be celebrating our freedom of worship. Um, we're going to be actually taking the group out to Mont Montague Beach to, to do a praise and worship session. So please have your, your children here by 9.20. Next week, the bus leaves at 9.30 sharp. Another announcement we have is, um, in the wake of the tragedy that happened last week, we have a sympathy card that we would like for everyone that is able to sign for the family of Dr. Miles Monroe. So um, we're going to have that outside if you would wish to sign that card. Um, and lastly, next week, we're going to have a card for BFM's, BFM's youth group specifically. Um, during one of the Acquire the Fire trips that we normally do annually, we actually met up with Pastor LaVard Parks on the trip. He had his group out there, we had our group, and we actually were able to coordinate a, a lunch together, uh, a dinner or a lunch together, and um, we just want to extend something to them um, in the form of a card, so we'll have that next week if you wish to sign that as well. All right, thank you. just want to remind you about the special prayer meeting for IANA, the I'm Not Ashamed uh, 2015 United Missions Outreach. We've been meeting as United Churches to pray. Our next prayer meeting is planned for the first Monday in December. That's in just a couple of weeks and it will be at Temple Baptist Church. So please make sure that you are there representing and praying for this conference. One final thing, I ask for personal prayer. Tomorrow, uh, I got a call over the weekend uh, at AF Adley, aside from the fact that the students are dealing with the tragedy that we're all dealing with as Bahamians, uh, they had a personal tragedy in that one of the students who had been suffering for quite a while from cancer died and the whole school is traumatized and so they ask for someone to come and speak to their students, give them some sense of hope. Please pray for me as I speak with them that perhaps we will touch a nerve and that in particular we will see persons coming to know the Lord, giving their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be in prayer for me. Thank you. You, you also reminded, uh, again, as you have your programs with you, there are a number of opportunities to the back of the bulletin for prayer. And uh, information is passed through us through the prayer garden. Uh, but we definitely want to keep in our hearts and minds, certainly the family, um, Brian and Letitia Clark, and their family as they 
um, together are uh, bereaved, the bereaved of their grand, sorry, Brian's grandmother who would have passed, um, Alice Malone, and she passed away on uh, this, come, this, this Wednesday pass. So please remember that family in your prayers. And again, all of the petitions that are inside the back of the program uses an opportunity in your prayer time um, to pray for those important needs of the church. We have one final announcement right after church. Uh, there, is, uh, there is a big pot of chicken sauce that was cooked, and we have a whole lot of chicken sauce that we'd like to ask you to please patronize and, and purchase. Um, this would aid in some of our mission needs as well. So if you're thinking of what's for breakfast tomorrow morning, uh, chicken sauce is uh, right here waiting for you. So right after church, please come and support uh, that endeavor. We're now going to prepare ourselves for uh, the word uh, through God's servant. And as we prepare for our pastor, our senior pastor, Lyle Bethel, he was, as he will come, I invite you to stand. And the praise team will lead us in our hymn as we prepare. A mighty fortress. A mighty fortress is our God. A
at a time when the church is struggling, at a time when a church must come to grips that a great man, great men and women have passed in what seems to be a tragic plane crash. At a time when many are wondering how come, why, how could this be? It's important for us not to give glory to the devil. For some to believe that somehow God's hedge of protection was broken through and somehow God was caught off guard and by surprise. We're here to understand that though the devil rages against the church and though there is none on earth that is his equal, we serve a God who far surpasses him in power. Who was ordained that no saint can be touched but by his permission. And so we're here today to affirm that despite the rage of the enemy, no saint of God can be removed off this earth but by God's permission. Get it right. I began this sermon series by helping all of us to understand without proper theology, you'll go crazy. Without a proper understanding of how things go, you can be so confused by life that your faith can tank and plummet. Today, by God's providence, we're actually dealing with the doctrine of the enemy of our, our souls, that is the devil. We're going to see that he only plays a role in the overall plan of God and that he, despite his power and rage, is but a pawn in the hands of Almighty God. Today, our Chinese friends and brothers are visiting with us, and we want to make sure that they get uh, much out of the sermon. Uh, a few know English, but most don't. And so, Brother Stephen is going to be uh, doing his part over on the side. So, um, get used to uh, some conversation over here. They're not being disrespectful. He is translating. But given the nature of this message, I feel there's so much on my chest, I'm not going to break for him to translate. He's going to run along at his own pace. Because I think there's so much in my spirit, if I have to break to translate, uh, that could not go as well as I, I, I would like to in the things I believe need to be said today. Amen? Amen. Father, we pause to ask your spirit's enablement on our sermon time. We have been richly helped to worship. We've been greatly helped um, to, to, to see our Lord in all of his majesty. We've broken bread together, remembering Christ's sacrifice. And now, Lord, we're asking for a deep understanding uh, as we go through this theme, for we are told that we should not be unaware of the devil's devices and his schemes, and we should know how to resist him and stand against him. For though his rage is great, we serve the one who will fell him with one word. And so today we ask for your unctionizing on our thinking, uh, your aid in our help and deliberation, and your spirit's enablement as we take stock of our lives and live our lives to the praise of your glory. To this end we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Just quickly, uh, as by way of announcement, I've been asked by um, uh, Brother Carl Nottage, who does a lot of cooking for our various uh, youth events, if there are persons that would uh, like to be apprenticed by him and work alongside him till, by God's grace, he may retire or move to other areas, please make yourself available and known to him and to uh, uh, the youth uh, leaders, Sister Jewel, uh, Tina, Sister Christine Williams, Tia Williams, and others. Uh, make yourself known to them that they uh, can know that you are someone they can look to and rely on. Amen? All right. Uh, about uh, five weeks, six, seven weeks ago, we began our doctrinal series with a first sermon entitled, The Sovereignty of God, Knowing It Brings Peace of Mind and Heart. Now, my one regret this morning is that I did not have the time to give you this handout, but I think it's so important that I'm just going to send it out uh, by way of, an, uh, of email uh, as sermon notes, and you can just have that ready and available to you. I said at that time that this series is designed to convince you that the doctrines of the faith, properly understood, can bring about peace of mind, sanity, and a more abiding faith because you know what is going on and you know how to relate to it and fit in. 
I said at that time that God in his sovereignty possesses all power and is the ruler of all things. That God rules and works according to his eternal purposes, even though events may seem to contradict or oppose his rule. It doesn't matter. He is ultimately in charge. Psalm 135, 6 says, whatever the Lord pleases, he does. Doesn't seek our permission, folks. Whatever God pleases, whatever pleases him, he does. He rules in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all the deeps. He's God. Daniel 4.35 says, All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, but he does according to his will. And the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can ward off his hands or say to him, What have you done? He's sovereign. God is in control. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. If you don't start there, you're going to think the devil scored a major victory. You're going to think the devil scored a major victory on Sunday past. But I'm here to tell you that the devil scored no victory, and God will use this incident to get glory for himself. Many, many videos have been going around, many a... Um, Link suggested that you should watch, but there's one that I heard that I thought was phenomenal. Now, we may not share the fa same theological distinctions on some things, but I believe that Pastor Miles Monroe spoke true when he said these words. We are now in a moment where the old weapons that kept the Bahamas don't work no more. I speak prophetically that we are now about to enter in the next few days a period of what I call the last moment. From July 2014 to July 2015, there shall be tremendous change in one year. You watch. There shall be many people down. Be sick. Men will be removed in ways we can't explain. Why? Because God got to make sure that the place is clear. I speak prophetically. You watch my word in the next 12 months from the day of July 10th, 214, there shall be magnificent changes which no one can control. And there shall emerge in the next 12 months leaders you never saw before. There shall be young women and men emerging whose ideas will blow your mind and they cannot wear the old armor anymore. They shall walk with a new mentality. They shall have a spirit upon them that shall be the spirit of God and they shall take us into the next Bahamas. I speak to you with my whole heart that God is saying the time for a new leadership has been birthed. It has arrived. Brothers and sisters, we may not accept every nuance on the wording of, of Pastor Miles there, but there is a truth that he is uttering. God is sovereign. And we must understand that just as it was said of David, when David had completed his purposes, for God and his generation, he fell asleep. Brothers and sisters, Pastor Miles, Pastor Richard Pinder, Ruth Monroe, Pastor Ruth Monroe, youth pastor Lavard, and his wife, Riddell Parks, their work for God came to an end. We say it was an accident. God said the work he had for them is completed. I also want to add to that, God removed Moses. The Bible says the man was, though he was 120, clear-eyed, clear-headed. There was no weakness in him. And God said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, mourn for him 40 days, and Joshua, now it's time for you. Friends, we must appreciate, we must understand that none of us knows when our time is coming. None of us knows how we will exit 
And, you know, I've had the, 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 the beauty, like many of you, of listening to some of his, of his messages, Pastor Miles' messages. And one thing he had right was this business of purpose, that we've got to finish our purpose and not let the graveyard rob any of us of the purpose that God had in bringing us into this world. Served his purpose, fell asleep. David served his purpose, fell asleep. On and on you can go throughout the scriptures. Brothers and sisters, let's not glorify the devil and say the devil took Pastor Miles and Pastor Richard and the, the rest of the pastoral staff, uh, the, the, the translator, the friend, the American that was traveling with him and the two pilots, that they were taken prematurely. They were taken in the plan of God because their purpose was finished. Let's not give the devil the glory there and act as though he determines when life starts and ends. Anyone out there hearing me? You see, because in times of tragedy, we can, we can go whole hog and give the devil a lot of glory. I want to give the strongest illustration. I know a young man, young man, barely into his 30s, only been in ministry for three years, killed and humiliated, Devil orchestrated a great plan, killed him. But brothers and sisters, my Bible says this was done according to the foreordained plan of God, that they crucified this Jesus. Young though he was, full of potential though he obviously was, but it was in the foreordained plan of God that it should be this way. In fact, if the devil knew what he's doing, the Bible says, if the rulers of this age had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would have hit brakes. And they would have done everything they possibly could to make sure the people worshipped Jesus and did not turn against him. Because if they had known that they were playing into the hands of God, they would not have done it. Brothers and sisters, God alone is sovereign. It's the, God and the devil are not equal and opposite forces. And sometimes God wins and sometimes the devil wins. No, friend, it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. That's, rebuke that thought. God alone is sovereign. And God said, it's time to come home, not the devil. And so let's, 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 let's comfort our hearts with that reality and know that our brother or our sister's work was done. And they've been called back home to glory. Amen? Amen. You see, we don't know completely the relationship between divine sovereignty and evil. We know that God does not do evil, but we know that God uses evil for his purposes. We saw this expressed through the mouth of his servant Joseph. You meant this thing against me for evil, but God meant it for good, to the saving of many lives. And so we must take our faith in what God says. He uses evil in his great plan of salvation so that even the devil in all of his guile, in all of his bile and venom against the church, Produced the master stroke that defeated him in fulfillment of the very first evangelistic prophecy. You will strike the seed of the woman on the heel, but he will crush your head. Yes, the devil struck. He struck the divine son of God, bringing him seemingly to death and the end. But in so doing, he crushed his own head. God is sovereign. Even evil is used in the plan of God. Even calamity is used. Is this why God can say, for I know the plans I have for you. They're plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to bring hope and a future. He uses good and calamity in order to bring it about. One final thing that Pastor Miles said. The reason I brought up Moses is sometimes... Other leaders can't arise because they remain in the shadows. And every time we see God remove a leader, there are others waiting to come up. So he got it right. You may not, you know, if you're of a particular theological bench, you may not like some of the wording or whatever, but the fact of the matter is truth, the truth of the principle there is there for us to hear. God is at work. And he may remove uh, a leader 
and in his sovereignty bring forth other leaders who would have never seen that they should arise because they were relying on that leader. You got it, church. And so let us give God the victory, the victory cry, because we, may, we have lost one who is dear to us, but God is about a greater work, and we will see. Miles Monroe still speaks. A nation that was not listening to him before has been listening all week to him now. He still speaks, make no mistake. And if you will not hear him live, you can hear him on tape. Because God still speaks. The blood of Abel still speaks, the scriptures say. And so God's saints are not lost to us in death. The word that they gave goes on. So let's trust God for his sovereignty. Let's believe that God is working things out in a way that maybe we don't understand. But because we know that God is sovereign, loving, and graceful, we know that he does all things well. All things well. You'll be hearing more about the various funeral services and memorial services. You'll be hearing about that. Our church will stay very current with that. Um, I've had the privilege of working with In fact, almost our entire staff has, has had the privilege of working uh, with BFM in one way, shape, or form. And so uh, we are friends with the church. We'll do our part to be there for them. Amen? Amen. Today, our sermon series centers around the doctrine of the devil, how he works and how he functions in the overall sovereign plan of God. And I really wanted to state it that way. I didn't want to deal with him alone, but I wanted you to see him in the sovereign plan of God. That's where he fits. No, not isolated, doing his own thing. He fits in the sovereign plan of God. How that must rankle him. He that wanted to be sovereign in and of himself. All that he does, God weaves into his plan of salvation. Why should we study him? Well, we need to know something of the schemes of the Lord's arch enemy, who is always at war with his arch enemy, the Lord Jesus Christ. Stephen, I'm at the beginning of page three. By understanding his ways, we can prevent unnecessary trouble. The best way to deal with a crisis, obviously, is to anticipate it and avoid it. The best way to deal with the enemy is to know his schemes and his strategies so we know how he could come. But brothers and sisters, more than anything else, we need to see the enemy as a defeated foe. You need to understand that he's a defeated foe. He is a dog on a leash. He has been defeated by the work of Christ. He has but a short window in which to operate. And while he has that window to operate, his strategy is to appear so all-powerful, so menacing, so unstoppable that he causes the saints to cower. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with a cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. But did we in our own strength confide? Are we so stupid to, to confide in ourselves to fight against him? No, if we did so, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man, not Moses, not Daniel, not, not, not Saul, not any of those guys. They help us. They give us good teaching. But listen, only one man dealt with the devil and his onslaught. That's Jesus. And he took all his venom in and of himself, took our... Uh, um, condemnation on himself and he snatched away the devil's right to accuse, to condemn, to bring ruin on the believer. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. You ask me who that should be? Christ Jesus. It is he. And he will win the battle. How? The, scripture, the, the song says, one little word will fell him. And though the world with devil's fill should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his sovereign plan. God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness, grim, therefore, we tremble not at him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word will fell him. Brothers and sisters, understand this. It begins with an understanding that God is sovereign. Life is not to be lived as you want. God in his sovereign will may say, you know what? 
I am going to give you a short life, live to the praise of my glory. But listen, this life is not what it's about. I have another life prepared for you. I have another experience for you that your mind could not conceive of. If you were to be told, you couldn't grasp it. For the eye is not seen, nor the ear heard. The things that God has for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So listen, friends. If God should decide your time on this life is limited, that's not a punishment. That's why you hear me say so much, we live to the praise of his glory. We don't live to the praise of building our castles. We don't live to the praise of building a legacy for ourselves. God decides that. God says, you live for me. And if the devil might think in his rage, I'm going to destroy this person, in the plan of God, God may say, you know what? I will let him go because I have 10 more who will be raised up because he goes. Anyone listen to me out there? You see, too many make the mistake again of thinking that God and the devil are playing chess. That the devil somehow is equal and as smart as God. No, friends. You play chess with a chess master and he's 15 moves ahead of you. 15 moves ahead of you. Every play you play, he knows you can play that. And he already has a strategy to deal with that. The devil continues to consult the scriptures that he could not see in all the scriptures that to crucify Jesus about his own doom. He couldn't see it. God is so far beyond him. And you and I, the reason we get tripped up is when we think we're here to live forever. And we're here to build our own kingdoms. And God doesn't give us what we want. And so we get vexed with God, failing to understand this kingdom, we're not building a kingdom for ourselves. And so if God gives you a short life, that's to the praise of his glory. If God gives you a long life, that's not because you are more special than the one he let die when he was younger. No, that's because he's got something for you to do and he looks for longevity from you. And so no one should get confused about the duration of their life or the quickness of their death. Sometimes it takes greater faith to maintain a faith for years and years and years in the midst of nothing apparently happening. God's glorified by that as well. But we must see the devil as a defeated foe. Why? Many persons with their preoccupation with the devil seem to ascribe more power to him than to God. But 1 John 4, 4 says, You, dear children, are from God and you have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. We need to realize that the devil is doomed to ultimate defeat and endless punishment. Revelations 12, 12 tells us he's come down because he knows his time is short. Every time Jesus encountered demonic spirit, them fellows say, like, hold it, hold it, hold it, you reach quick, what you doing here? Uh, have you come to destroy us before the time? Why are they saying that? Every one of them know they defeated. To, to put it in behavior colloquially, what you doing here? I thought she was coming in maybe another thousand years or something. What you doing here? That sound like someone in charge? No. No. They know their time is short. Matthew 8.29 says he knows his end is near. We should also know that Satan is behind and will help along every belief or religion that's not honoring to Jesus Christ. He gets behind false religions and tries to make them real to the understanding of the one who believes it. He, he gets behind non-Christian religions of the world. He gets behind everything that is opposed to God and a clear understanding of him. Let's take a minute to look at the origins of the devil. Uh, page three, bottom page three, Stephen. Whereas the Bible does not explain things perhaps as clearly as we would wish, on the origin of the devil, there's still some things that we can know and understand. There's still some things that we can clearly understand. Well, the first thing we can understand, Colossians 1, 16 through 17 says that God made all things, powers, principalities, rulers, they're all made by him. So he made all things. This is essential for us to understand, again, so none of us falls prey to the idea that they're equal and opposites. The devil is a created being made uh, by God. The Lord Jesus Christ, we understand. John 1, all things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. 
But we should note that the devil was not created as he now is. He was not created evil, but he became evil at some point in eternity past. We're not sure exactly how this happened, but most theologians would agree that Isaiah 14 gives us the clearest explanation. Here we see that Satan was known as Lucifer, son of the morning, or morning star, the son of the dawn, Isaiah 14, 12. We know that he revolted against God at some point in eternity past, saying, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the throne of God. I will make myself like the Most High. Here is a demonic, here is the beautiful angel charged with bringing forth worship to God and somewhere in his heart because of his pride. Um, another scripture says, Ezekiel, because of the arrogance and pride not enough to look on the glory of God he desired to be God himself and pride was found in his heart and he fell first in his heart and then he was cast out of heaven itself we know from the scriptures that he took a third of the angels with him perhaps of every order perhaps archangels went with him certainly cherubim and seraphim would have gone with him from the highest to the lowest it seems that he got a good percentage of the types of angels for we see in we see in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, For we wrestle not against uh, flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against principalities and powers, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly realm. Rank on rank, order of demonic foes lined up with him that went with him when he fell. Boy, you got to say to yourself, he must have had an incredibly slick tongue. You mean to tell me he could have influenced a third of heaven's angels to say, listen, let's not follow him, follow me. And I can make all of us better off. Wow. No wonder he is called a liar and the father of lies. His nature now is to lie and to deceive. May not get to the end of my message, but I can say it now. One great theologian said back in the 14th century, Dougie, if the devil telling you the truth, don't believe him. <laughs> if the devil tell you the truth, don't believe him. Because behind that truth, a lie coming. And he's only telling you that truth because he got a lie coming behind it. Friends, when you know the nature of the enemy, when you know you are being influenced to do a particular sin, understand who's telling you. And the Bible says his plan for you is to kill, steal, and destroy. Not give you a better, sweeter, sexual relationship, because that's what he's posing it as. But my brother, his end result is to... Your, your, I don't know about you all and, and centipede. If I see a centipede, you will not recognize him by the time I finish with him. He is paste. That hard... What they call that? Outer shell? Exoskeleton. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Scott. By the time I finish with that exoskeleton, that is paste. I don't want anything resembling that centipede to exist. And that is what the devil's cruel rays towards the saints are. He will utterly destroy you, but he realized the only way to destroy the Christian who is in the hedge of God is to get them to try and come out from under that hedge of protection. And so he entices with real enticements. The devil ain't going to use his enticements on me that he can use on you because we have two different sets of enticements. He knows, listen, he pulls out the file and he sees what your issues are. That's why you can't live for yourself. That's why we're memorizing scriptures like, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me because guess what? If the life you live you, in the flesh you live for yourself, devil got your number. He's got your number. He's got your number. He knows what can bring you down. He knows what temptations, and listen, if you think a Hollywood producer could put together a good movie where you are suspended and you'll be cheering for the bad guy in some of these movies, they're so cleverly done. If you think these jokey Hollywood actors with a few years of experience in their, under their belt can make a movie that'll get you cheering for the good guy and cheering for adultery to happen, imagine the devil 
who for all of his craft and subtlety for over 6,000 plus years have, has watched man and seen how you bring a man down, Dougie. Wait, Dougie, you sit in the right place. I look straight at you. All right? Do you want? You understand me? He, he, he knows. He has worked these stratagems for years and for centuries. And he, he recognized three things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life will bring you down every single time. Work with Eve. It's been working on everyone ever since. He understands. He knows how this thing goes. If you can't get the lust of their eyes, appeal to their pride. Appeal to their pride. How many wars have been fought because the two leaders are, their, proud, their pride has been offended? How many churches get in trouble because, because some two, two in the book of Philippians, there's been a problem between Euidia and Syntyche. It's been going on for years. These are two precious women who've worked with Paul in ministry, but they are warring. Well, they're Christian sisters, so they're not really warring, but they are, hmm. It's creating a schism in the church. You see, what's happening? The devil has appealed to their pride. You don't tell her sorry. Who she is to talk to you like that? You understand? And friends, believe it or not, I love Grace Community Church. There's all of these cultures in this church. Jamaican and Bayesian and what? Sermonese? Whatever. That, whatever, okay? Uh, Suriname, thank you. It's easy to say. Now we've got Chinese. Friends, listen. The more different nationalities, the more offenses can take place. And so you can't just live on your flesh. You can't just say, well, you know, that offends me. So what? Paul says, do everything. Everything that leads to unity in the faith. Let no one be found creating schisms in the church of God. You can't let one little thing offend you. My Jesus. The devil could look around and say, now how I get jack up Grace Community Church? Let's see. Well, that one prideful. That one looked like they like women too much. That one like man. All right, let's see what we can do. And so he works. He gets his Hollywood demons them out and they work a plan and they work a plan and they work a plan. They don't need no one week to wake no plan. These fellas be waking a plan for three and four years. By the time that plan hit, there is deep, deep, deep roots in that problem. Why well, wish someone was hearing me today. For still our ancient foe does seek to work us. Whoa! It's a mystery that we churches last so long. It's a mystery. Because 24-7 without sleep and the devil has a legion of demonic spirits working to bring you to ruin. And there's only way, only one way he won't succeed. We have been crucified with Christ. And it is no longer we who live. For Christ lives in us. And the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God who loves us and died for us. Get your flesh out of the way. What do the scriptures say? The, fruits of the, 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 the fruit of the flesh is obvious. Factions, dissensions, licentiousness, lust, adultery, all of these things, they're part of the flesh. But he said, listen, let's not get drank, drunk with wine, but let's be drunk with the things of the Spirit. Let's be affected by the things of the Spirit, which produces love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, devil ain't got a, a chance in hell to mess with the church of God. So we must understand, we must understand that the devil is out to ruin the saints, and he has a legion of demonic powers with which to help him. Let me uh, uh, end right here by saying this. We haven't gotten to the descriptions of the devil, his names, it'll give you some information. His description, his purposes and character and the plan of God, we ain't touch on none of that. Lots to touch on next, uh, next week. We'll try to make sure, well, we won't try to make sure. You will have your handout available so you can follow along. We, maybe if I can get it to you, uh, Stephen, we can maybe have it translated to Mandarin and the brothers can follow along. Amen? Okay. But let me say this. Here is the wonderful difference. I, I want to put this in your spirit for you to understand something. God's angels follow him. They, they, they obey him. 
And on top of that, God is sovereign. Get the difference. The devil is not sovereign. If he in my bedroom, he can't be in my bathroom. Oh, I, I want you all to listen to me because I go in deep now. Okay? I want you to catch something now. Okay? The devil is not sovereign. He is not everywhere present as God is. He is limited in his locality. And because he's not sovereign, and because he's limited, he relies on his demonic network. You got me? Hold on, I finish yet. I ain't even said nothing yet. I know we'll clap it. Here's what I want you to understand. Just as the devil is a liar and the father of lies, all his demon spirits is lie. And so when the devil says, how is our plan going to ruin grace? And grace now is crucified with Christ. The, de the, the demonic spirit who dealing with grace say, Lord, Lord devil. He can't say Lord Jesus. He don't say that. Say, what I could tell him, if I tell him I got grace on lockdown, I might end up washing the bathroom toilets. Uh, and they're going well, Lord Satan. <laughs> I got grace covered. And so, listen, the devil's information about what's going on is not complete. The demonic powers lie to him too. And so he doesn't have all knowledge about what's going on. He don't really know what's happening because the one who lies is getting lied to. When I pray, I say, Lord, confuse what the demonic powers are doing. Trip them up. Trip them up. Mess them up. So that they don't listen, folks. You got to be praying like that. Trip them up. Lord, undo the plan that the devil is making against so and so or, or who and who. And watch God bring about the aid and deliverance. Friends, we have to close. Our time is gone. What do we understand? The devil and God are not equals. <clears throat> They're not even anywhere close. The Bible says that God is far above all principalities and powers. Not above. Not above. You know, my son right now is above me in height. He ain't far above. He's trying to look down on top of my head, right? But Shaq is far above me. Shaq probably got to lean down to lean his elbow on me. All right? He's far above. Listen, that is a joke to how far above God is over the enemy. Beyond being far above in majesty and power and dominion, God is sovereign. And beyond that, God has an, an angelic order that serves him completely. The devil don't have sovereignty. He don't have omnipresence. He doesn't have a reliable army to work with him. But if he can get you to believe he's all that, if he can get you to believe that he is to be feared more than God is to be feared and revered, then you will live a broken down faith rather than a powerful one that says, did we in our own strength confide our striving would be losing? But not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. You ask me who that may be, Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth, his name from age to age the same, and he will win the battle. So we take our stock with God. We say, we can say with Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh will I see God. Because this life is only to be lived to the praise of his glory. Not to build an empire, not to build a city, not to build uh, a, a business unto my name. But if that is God's will for me, I do it. Get our priorities right. And we will storm the gates of hell. Free them of their captives to the praise and glory of God. I'm going to pray for us in just a minute, but it's only fitting that with this wonderful word from God to us, let us sing together. A mighty fortress is our God, and I will come back and commit us to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let's all stand.
Amen. I have labored today to have us to be aware of the reality of demonic powers that exist around us. Uh, not just bad things happening uh, to persons, but the fact that there is a malevolent entity out there ensuring that bad things happen. Testing the saints, tempting the saints, trying to bring ruin on the saints. This week I became privy to a matter. I, I meant to acquire the right to do this. I don't think the person will mind. But I just want to use it to show you the reality of how the devil works. A person was baptized on a Sunday. I won't, I won't say when. I don't want to give out any more detail than I need to. And that night, while trying to sleep, a demonic presence showed up in the room. The night after the baptism. Less than nine hours later, malevolent, glaring, trying to intimidate the one who had gone into the waters of baptism. Friends, the fight is real. The attempt there was to frighten this believer and abandon what they had done. But I was able to speak words of faith into that individual and help them to understand, listen, demonic spirits are a proud race. And to know that a little old human of clay can demand a demonic spirit <clears throat> to obey them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ they don't want to risk and so I tried to help that person and the rest of the class to understand this you rebuke them in the name of Jesus you take authority over them they're not going to want to hang around to see a clay a clay human being with no glory and dignity that they have <coughs> tell them what to do and so we must understand, despite his rage, God has given the believer authority. We'll get to this next week. God has given the believer authority to deal with a demonic oppression and attacks against his life. And so we want to be helped to understand that despite the devil's rage, despite his power, the believer is not without help. The divine protection of the Lord. And because the Lord is ever training the saints for battle, he gives them authority to deal with demonic powers. There is a reality of a spiritual world superimposed on top of ours. Brothers and sisters, if anyone is struggling with spiritual oppression of any kind, make yourself known to us as a church, and we can help you to have the spiritual wherewithal to take command of your home that may be demonically harassed. Take command of your life that may be broken down spiritually. And you see the victory that is found in Jesus. I want to pray for all of us. Our time is gone. But opportunities to serve the Lord remain. And to do so in the power that he provides. Shall we pray? Holy Spirit, I've been praying that you would have your way in our hearts and our minds. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would bring back to the minds of everyone here the deep truths, the things that they need to know about who they are in Christ. Though we face an enemy who has an inveterate hatred against us, a cruel hatred, the believer enjoys a protection that Job had, that hedge of protection around his life. And he or she is safe. But help us, Lord, to walk in the victory that is ours in Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, if there are any saints here who are in any way overthrown, handicapped, struggling, that you would bring even now the aid and help to give them the victory that's found in Jesus Christ. Help them to be able to sing as is in the background. There's victory in Jesus, our Savior forever. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. We want to invite our guests to join us through this door to the back of the church. We have refreshments prepared for you. We'd like to have all of our guests join us for moments of refreshments. The rest of us, let's mingle with each other, encourage one another, um, greet each other with a, a hug and perhaps a kiss, and let's live to the praise of his glory. In Jesus' name, amen.